Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Global. Today we are in Qingdao, exactly at Qingdao International Beer Festival. Now, Qingdao is a fascinating city. It actually has been built by the Germans more than a hundred years ago. So in this video, we are going to go through German architecture, history, the German posts, the German pharmacies, as well as the most important German beer. But at the end of the video, I'm going to compare my experience in the Qingdao Beer Festival compared to the Munich Oktoberfest that I've experienced in the past. So follow through till the end of this video. Now, Qingdao is a coastal city in eastern Shandong province, home to 9 million people. It is a commercial center and has the highest GDP of any city in the province. But the history of Qingdao began to be known by people only after it was occupied by the Germans in 1897. After the Juye incident, when two German missionaries were killed, Qing dynasty was forced to concede the area to Germany. The city was developing under the German occupation until 1914, taken over by the Japanese after Japan's declaration of war on Germany during World War I. During those 15 years, various infrastructure systems have been built. We can find the history within the various museums in Qingdao, from the post office, telegraph, and telephone systems, to railway across the region, and even German Hochschule. Though colonialism always implies exploitation and can lead to many conflicts, it is also true that the Germans did build a well-planned city during its colonial period. There was a long-standing rumor known by many Chinese that the sewers in Qingdao built by Germans are still operational. When some of the inner fittings needed to be replaced, they found that the company that originally built it. When contacted, they pointed to the concealed location for spare parts, which were ready to be used. Even though in the end it was confirmed as fake news, it shows Made in Germany stands for quality. Today, we still can find a few buildings with German traces that has transformed into popular tourist attractions around the city. Now behind me is the old station of Qingdao. As you can see, it's very typical German architecture. Even the current train station in the city center mimics the same style of the original station built by Germans a hundred years ago. Now behind me, this magnificent building is the residence of the German governor at that time. Today, it serves as a museum, but more than a hundred years ago, it was the residence of the governor and his family. Even by today's standards, this is still a very luxurious villa, over 4,000 square meters, that is built on the hill overlooking the sea. Now, talking about Qingdao, the single most important element is beer, and you can find Qingdao beer on almost every single street, thanks to the Germans. So we are now in the Qingdao Beer Museum. As you can see behind me, there is a statue stating 100 years. Actually, it's, since this year, it's already 120 years of history. As you can see behind me, even though it's on a rainy day, there's still so many people queuing. There have been more than 10 million people visiting this museum, over 2,000 already today. Only five years after Germany occupied Qingdao, they also brought their beer with them. The brewery was founded on August 15, 1903, with a paid in capital of 400,000 Mexican silver dollars, divided into 4,000 shares, priced at $100 each. Interestingly enough, the combination of German technology and the local spring water shaped the famous Qingdao beer, and even won the gold award back home at the 1906 Munich Expo. 120 years ago, the brewery only had a capacity of 2,000 tons a year, 
and they only produced Pilsner and Munich dark beer. Today, there are five modern breweries in Qingdao alone, with a capacity of 2,000 tons per day, offering different products, sold all over China and exported to around the world in different packages. Of course, Germans not only brought the first beer into China, but also brought their beer culture, such as the Qingdao International Beer Festival, which is similar to the Oktoberfest in Munich, though there are some noticeable differences. The first difference is that the Qingdao Beer Festival is only crowded in the evenings, but till midnight, compared to the Oktoberfest that starts at 10 a.m. and ends around 10 p.m. I was actually hoping that um, if I come during the weekends, during the daytime, this place will be completely full, but it does seem like the uh, programs only start in the evenings. And then I realized that it actually makes sense to come only during the evenings, because it is so hot during the daytime in summer. And right beside the beer festival venue is the most famous beach in Qingdao. So locals can actually swim during the day and come to the festival in the evening. In terms of performances, I think there are more in Qingdao. And there are more modern. There are also a couple of stages around the venue. Whereas in Oktoberfest, the performances and music played are much more traditional. In terms of games and activities, I think both events offers a lot of fun, especially for kids. Now, last but not least, the food and beer. I think both events offer a lot of options. In Qingdao International Beer Festival, you can find both Chinese and international beer. While during Oktoberfest, it is mainly local beer. However, the biggest news this year in China on the internet was this German girl who complained that she bought German imported Hofbau München beer at the event, but she never heard of it and it tastes bitter. And the meat they ate was also bad or maybe even not lamb meat as they were told. Afterwards, the local authorities supported her claim and asked the seller to pay back three times the amount. Unfortunately, amongst all the tents, I could not find Hofbau München, so I could not try it out and see if it is really fake. But from the food quality I have seen, I personally think Oktoberfest is better. So that's it for our video today. Qingdao is a lovely coastal city with many German traces, but the beer festival still has a long way to go to attract more tourists like Oktoberfest. If you have any comments, questions, or topics that you would like to discuss in our next videos, feel free to comment in the section below. Here at Glopen, we inspire learning, exchange, and business. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.